Uh, so Cyberpunk has officially gone gold, which means the game has been certified by the uh, console manufacturer Sony and Microsoft. And so just leading, even leading up to the release, they're still working on patches and whatnot. And uh, games journalist Jason Schreier, who was previously at Kotaku, currently at Bloomberg, had reported that CG Project Red had mandated six day work weeks up to release. And um, this caused a bit of a stir because, you know, obviously, I think everyone here can agree crunch sucks, Mm -hmm. especially when it's unpaid. But in this situation, it's a little bit different because CG Project Red is a Polish company. Um, So the president, uh, I think I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right, Badowski, Badowski uh, said that uh, CG Project Red employees can continue to count on bonus payouts amounting to 10 percent of the company's annual profit. So obviously, obviously something that America's shitty labor laws are not going to guarantee to uh, American developers. And uh, thanks to Polish labor laws, their their hours are supposed to be capped at 48 hours a week and they get other additional benefits. So it's worth noting that, yes, crunch sucks, but they do have these other benefits. Um, but even right. outside of that, you know, crunch is just like an ever present culture, like an expectation to be like, hey, you're going to stay late today. Right. And if you're like, no, I have to go home. I have to see my family. You come in tomorrow. The next day, everyone's glaring at you because like, hey. Uh, I had to stay late doing something because you didn't want to stay late. It's, it's that fucking like uh, culture just like bearing down on you. That's telling you like you need to give up your life to work here. And I don't want to yeah. speak for for everyone here, but I've definitely gone through um, rough patches of crunch. Not not nowhere near it to the extent that many game developers go through, but it fucking it blows. It sucks, mm-hmm. especially when it's unpaid. If I get paid for it, that's an entirely different thing. But it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about the... Um, or I guess I'll lead into it a bit. Um, so Jason <laughs> Shry is usually very accurate with all his reportings. I don't want to disparage his reportings because it, it is accurate. But uh, he also made some shots at both um, gaming influencer Paris and, uh, and Game Informer for providing a little bit of nuance to the subject. I know it kind of peeved you off a bit if you want to go yeah. on Yeah. So just a heads up, I'm not biased on this, or I am biased. I don't like Jason. I think he's been too high up on his horse after moving to Bloomberg, which uh, is normally a white, uh, I can't say this word without fucking it up, a right wing news out- outlet. So just a heads up to that. Um, sorry, th- I had to get some teeth. Do you think the- they stop and frisk their employees? <laughs> 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 they send someone to your house. Who's stopping to frisk you? But um, no, no, that's terrible. I really don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, what if if I remember the situation correctly? What had happened was uh, um, this. I call him an influencer. There's some people who, are, but whatever. Uh, Paris came out and. Um, kind of called out Jason because Jason put out this article literally I think it was two days after uh, Cyberpunk went gold and he he almost put it out as like almost like a response to that and Paris brought up like oh you're making it hard for them for the employees to celebrate the fact that their game is finally done absolutely it's it's like all the hours and like time they spend away from their families like what what? I'm sorry Hmm? go ahead no, like the fact when Jason released the article seemed timed as hell, as if he knew when the game was going to go gold, and he wanted to drop this literally. I think it was date like a two days after, like like it was really close to like after CD Projekt Red had announced that that the game went rogue, a uh, rogue heh, gold. So Paris called him out, and he's like, "Look, it's not." Like, like, I get you want to. I even think that Paris commended him on his uh, re- 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 reporting too. Like, Paris was like, "Look, you're a great journalist. You call out crunch when it's not good, and I completely agree. But it's not cool right now because these developers are cel- celebrating." It's kind of they, a thing where it's just like, can you at least like wait a day, maybe? Yeah. And um, what came after was some of the uh, hot take, pettiest bullshit I have ever seen, because. What happened was Jason dug into Paris's Twitter account and not quote tweeted him, but screenshotted tweets of when Paris received um, like influencer. I don't want to exactly call them gifts, 
but swag from CD Project Red because Paris mm-hmm. is a huge fan of theirs. He he loves the Witcher. He's super excited for Cyberpunk. So CD Project Red obviously sent him stuff. They sent him a, a gaming chair. They sent him like an influencer kit. And Paris has gone on record, I think, even saying that like when the game come comes out, he will critique it on stuff that's not good. He will like point out the stuff that's bad about it. Like he he basically what he's saying is they're not paying him to say good things. He is he is going to be honest. And mm-hmm. what he did instead of quote tweeting these, he screenshotted like literally did that iPhone like click and like oh, screenshotted yeah. them, and then like uh what's the word like uh. Crop cropped to the images and was like oh at least i'm not receiving a gaming chair from them i don't i don't accept gaming swag because that makes me look biased and it was like this really really what's the word um just petty it's, it's just petty oh well, yeah such and, unnecessary drama and it's like paris sh- i will admit paris shouldn't have poked the bear because no one should poke Jason Schreier because this shit happens. I, th- I think and just also, going back to what you said is just like, yeah, I, I love Jason's work and what he's doing. And obviously what he's doing, like putting um, a spotlight on crunch is important. But I think there's definitely a little bit of an ego issue going on. And just oh, like, like, like even after he tried, he, he blew up on Paris, he blocked him anyway. It's just like, maybe mm-hmm. you should have just done that to begin with. And and I'm not like trying to say anything telling but it's extremely interesting that he only called out Paris for receiving the chair when other influencers like Alana Pierce of Inside Gaming, she received the same chair. She is she is in the game yeah. and he only called out Paris uh, to her specific credits because um, she has a podcast that she also uh, one of her co-hosts is Troy Baker. So whenever it comes to stuff like that, where she has a conflict of interest, she just completely removes herself from the discussion. Like she won't even talk about it, won't review it, won't do preview coverage and whatnot. So credit to her for that. And it's but it's just like it was so extremely petty and. I wasn't a fan of Jason before this, and I'm still not a fan of him now. Well, like, even after the Paris that? stuff, um, there was a GameSpot uh, podcast with, um, I believe it was Liana Rupert, like just giving a, like what we're doing here, giving a little bit of nuance to the situation. And Jason blew up on them again, saying like, "Oh, you're you're saying like what I'm saying is not true about all these reports." And that's and I listened to the entire podcast, and, and there was no. Say- yeah, they don't say that. So he's and just then, constantly so he, blown up on people. It's just annoying. And, and and supposedly him blowing up on that show sent death threats to her. His his followers went through and sent and sent death threats to her. See, that's not. I mean, I'm always hearing stuff like that, and that's not okay. Like guys, don't get involved in the drama online. Don't send death threats to people. Like that's not okay. And also, I, it's extremely telling that Trier did nothing about that when she posted about it. He did I think, I, nothing. I think, I think at one level, it should almost be assumed like most people would disavow that kind of activity. But still, like as someone with a platform, you should be coming out and saying, like, don't do this shit. If you do this shit, fuck you. Get the fuck out of my community. Mm-hmm. It's just it's and it's like, again, I'm again brought up what i did last week you can love something and be excited for something but still be able to point out the bad of it or point out what's not great about it and i will admit i'm excited for cyberpunk 2077 i have been for like a long time i don't like even like yeah polish laws are different and i think it's great that they're still getting paid but you should never work like six days a week straight like I did that once back in my GameStop days. I worked like five days in a row and I legitimately was just dead, like busted out crying in the middle of work on like the fifth day. Yeah, that happened right. to me too, where I I uh I was working my butt off constantly and uh my my store was a high volume store and uh my my man my district manager's um word to me was um well are you using all forty four of your mandatory hours are you using your mandatory overtime and i literally was just silent over the phone i was just like shocked i was mm-hmm. like oh so okay so so your so your response is to not give me the needed help that i need on probably a daily basis because i'm a new manager and everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but to work harder okay like 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> Un- unpaid overtime is bullshit. Uh, unions can help with that. But uh, just going back to the, I guess, kind of free swag aspect of it, just because I want to open the topic a little. What are your thoughts on, let, let's say, an influencer, YouTuber, whatever? If Does them getting swag from a company, does that taint their credibility in your mind? And I will, uh, no, because I don't know if that will went through. Uh, no, and I'm going to actually, I mean, Corey and I aren't influencers, but we worked at GameStop for a couple of years each. And we get free swag all the time. Like companies send us shit like lanyards, pins, shirts. We get free copies of games. Like I got fucking, I went to uh, conference and I got a bunch of free stuff, including a, a free PlayStation Pro. So yeah, oh, nice. I got <laughs> I got free copies of Crackdown 3. Like I got free stuff. And I remember we got a lot of stuff from Rockstar for Red Dead Redemption 2. And anyone who knows me knows I am the least biggest rockstar person like <laughs> if people ask me what that what i think about like red dead or like gta i will be honest and say that i don't like them and i use the red dead lanyard like i use lanyards for other games that i didn't like but i was honest and people asked me what i thought about them i can understand you can see it tainting pe- people because like oh you took the free stuff you're you're gonna be like you're gonna faking be honest because they gave you like a free shirt or like a free chair but it's like, I feel like if people like Alana Pierce, she's a great example where she came out and she said, yes, I got this chair. Yes, I'm in the game, but I will not be doing anything close to a review of it. I won't be doing this just because I know that it's not like it won't be biased or like it won't be un, un, unbiased because I'm in it because I'm doing this. I, I, think I guess for me, at least it, it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I think it's just like if you're upfront about it. It can be like, hey, yes, they provided me with this free thing. Like, I'll be the first to say Crackdown 3 is garbage. Like, yes, I have a free copy of it. Yes, I was mm-hmm. given a free copy of it. But Crackdown 3 is garbo. <laughs> like, I'll be the first to say it. Like, I think if, from, if you're honest, then people will understand. I think for me, it's I. It's generally a case-by-case basis. Like, Parrish, like, I've been listening to him for forever now. And it's just like, I know the dude's genuine. And no amount of, like, just free swag, even if it's directly from the company to him, is going to... Uh, is going to sway him to be like, yeah, this game's amazing. Even if, you know, he has like a big serious issue with it. Like he's honest and he'll point bullshit out if he sees bullshit. And he's, he's been on their case about crunch since day one. He's just, you know, he's still excited for it. But uh, yeah, if uh, raid shadow legends wants to sponsor me, I'll, I'll take the money, but I, 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 I'm not going to play it. I'll, 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 I'll say whatever lines you want because this podcast don't pay for itself on podcast services. <laughs> Blizzard, but, uh, Blizzard, please. I talk, I talk about you every week. I have a tattoo. <laughs> Blizzard, please. <laughs> I, need, I need that gaming chair, man. But uh, I, I know one particular incident of this that actually still kind of annoys me to this day is um, I think we even talked about it a little bit yesterday off um, off stream was the uh, re- the the um the infamous rooster teeth v jeff gersman case of uh 2016 i think that's when fallout 4 Damn, that has taken us back yeah um basically <laughs> <laughs> before the before the apocalypse times before right? the before <laughs> times um so fallout 4 had come out and you know it had a lot of issues at launch and you know maybe we won't go into like a full review here, but people had issues with the game and uh, giant bombs, uh, Jeff Gersman, who would, who was pretty infamous in the industry for just saying what the fuck he thinks. He got fired from GameSpot for refusing to uh, give a higher score to a game because the publisher for that game was putting pressure on GameSpot. So they fired him because of it. So I would say he's probably the beacon of integrity throughout the industry. Mm-hmm. And so he gave Fallout 4 like a three out of five because he said, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of technical issues and it's got, you know, just other game design issues. And on one of Rooster Teeth's podcasts, um, they were kind of just give like just a ra- giving him a round table's worth of shit saying like, oh, he only gave it a three out of five because he wants attention for his website. He thinks like he's a wine and cheese connoisseur speaking down to the lowly peasants. Like, oh, I gave it a three out of five because I have a high art critique of this game. But they're saying this the entire time while they're decked out and like Fallout merch and like pit boys and collector's items uh, that were provided to them directly from Bethesda, the company behind Fallout. 
And uh, at the time, they were also getting, you know, paid ads by Bethesda and doing sponsored paid video content by Bethesda. So that, that that's one instance where I'm just like, yeah, it's a case by case. So I'm just like, yeah, it's pretty obvious to see where that influence is from. Mm-hmm. But something like Paris, I, I have absolute faith in him. Uh, and it's and it's just like it sucks because from what I know of Paris, which is not as much as you obviously, but I've just now started watching his content. He seems like the sweetest human on earth, and for he knows how to barbecue really good, apparently too. And for <laughs> and for Jason Schreier to just like pettily like screenshot his tweets and then call call him out for accepting what looks like a very nice chair, like it's just like it's so petty to me. And it's mm-hmm. so gross. It's just like ah, it's just unnecessary thing, Twitter bullshit. Out of me. It's fucking like that whole thing. I was just like, it's too early for this. 